You shared some details about your previous pregnancy history, and unfortunately, you haven't had good outcomes. Your first pregnancy ended around 21 weeks, um, and you lost your baby, and I'm so sorry for that. My heart goes out to you and your family for your loss. And then right after that, it was followed up by a molar pregnancy, so you've definitely been through a lot of challenging things. Um, you have a question now about a molar pregnancy versus PCOS, and let's start with the molar pregnancy. Basically, a molar pregnancy is an abnormal development of either the embryo or the placenta or both, and it happens very, very early on. Um, a complete molar pregnancy is when you have um, an abnormal embryo and you have abnormal placental tissue. A partial molar, which is what you said you had, is where you have an abnormal embryo and then you may have some normal placental tissue, but either way, the baby isn't going to survive. Now, um, there are certain signs and symptoms that might clue your doctor into the fact that it could possibly be a molar pregnancy, but ultimately it's diagnosed upon ultrasound, sometimes they do blood work, and once they've determined that it's a molar pregnancy, the pregnancy needs to end because it can have complications that can affect your well-being. Now to directly answer your question, polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS is not related to a molar pregnancy. PCOS causes enlarged ovaries and they contain um, tiny fluid-filled sacs and this too is diagnosed on ultrasound and they can see cysts on the ovaries but again these are on the ovaries and in a molar pregnancy what they see is inside the uterus so they're in different locations and the two are not mistaken for each other. I sincerely hope the very best for you in the future, and if you have any more questions for me along the way, please feel free to ask them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Intermountain Moms, and recommend us to your friends and family too.